that may not be one of the easiest things that Jesus ever told. I mean, after all, we live in a world today that has a cancer. We do. It is a cancer. You know, cancer starts when just a few little cells in the human body get sick. And then they begin to multiply and they start multiplying rapidly until they begin to impact the, uh, the systems around it. They begin to cause damage to organs and they eventually kill the body. And our world, our world has a cancer. The cancer is named terrorism. The, the new reality is that there are terrorist groups whose names a few years ago we would have thought would have been uh, unpronounceable and just uh, we would have dismissed them. But now the Islamic State beheadings, Taliban, repression, and Al Qaeda. This week in France, walking into an office building and killing people who drew cartoons. There is a cancer in our world. It started out with just a few people with a grievance and they felt weak and abused and finally they got fed up and then in the name of religion and politics under a, a, a leader of insanity. They lashed out. They've started a lethal cycle of hate and violence that is without borders. A cancer that threatens our very world. In the midst of all this, Jesus says, if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other. Uh, now, is our Lord really saying to us that uh, we are to let such wickedness and such evil go unchallenged? Are we allow terrorists to control, destroy our cultures? Are we to let evil win? Are we to, like the Jews of World War II, walk willingly into the ovens of wickedness? If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other. We don't even have to go to the extremes of terrorism. We can go into uh, most any school and find local terrorists. We call them by the name of bullies. And you realize that to allow a bully, remember how that was when you were a child? when the bullies on the playground were having their way, you realize that if they went unchallenged, no one stood up to them. They didn't go away. They just got meaner. Jesus says, someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. And you realize when there are bullies around, as they get meaner, the weak get weaker. People become more afraid. They become more introverted. Jesus says, someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to them the other. And, and we have heard over and over again of uh, nice kids, quiet kids, that do these horrible things because somewhere along the way, uh, the bullies, the wickedness of the world, destroyed something within them. They have names like Elliot Roger, who went to the University of California in Santa Barbara, killed six. Dylan Keebold and Eric Harris in Caliban, killed 11 and wounded 23. Singho Chai Cho, Virginia Tech, killed 32 and wounded 17. Mitchell Johnson and Andrew Golden went to Westfield Middle School in Arkansas and killed five and wounded 10. And Jesus says, someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other as well. It is advice that we find difficult to take and even more difficult to offer. I mean, certainly no one, if someone came to you and says, my wife, my husband is beating me up. They're abusing me. They hurt me. 
None of us would say to them, well, just turn the other cheek to your spouse. Learn to let it go. Wouldn't do that. Or if, if we had a child make known to us that they were being sexually abused by an adult, none of us would say to them, well, just learn to turn the other cheek. Learn to live with it. Such advice is, is immoral and illegal. What Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Are, are we to let the bad guys, the bad gals get away with wrong? Isn't justice a moral imperative of the Scripture as well? The Bible does say, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of the destitute. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. The prophet Isaiah says, learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the wicked. What, what is Jesus talking about here? It certainly cannot be to simply allow evil to go unfettered in the world. To read the words of Jesus in such way is, is, is wrong. We are to defend. We are to confront evil. We are not to let wickedness stand. Onward, Christian soldiers marching off to war. There are times that we have to stand against evil and pay whatever the cost. Well, what then is Jesus talking about? If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. What, what is he referring to? Well, a, a long time ago, in my very first church, I, I tried to preach on this passage, and I wanted to, to get the congregation's attention in doing that. And so I asked my best friend of the congregation, a man named Eldon, I said to him, Eldon, I need you to come up and, and slap me. Now, Eldon's this tall, wiry dude, farm kid, and I thought that he would be dramatic, but not impactful. <laughs> he came up, and he whacked me, and my ears rang. That is why we are not going to reenact that moment again. Maybe Aaron would have, but not me. Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Someone slaps you, give to them the other one also. Uh, when, when somebody slaps you, we, we need to really take a look at what that means. When, when, when you're being slapped, it is not a lethal threat, is it? Somebody doesn't slap you to try to kill you. Uh, a, a slap has to do with uh, an insult, it really is, it is, it is a, a put down, it is a, a rejection, it is an insult. Remember the old uh, um, uh, duel movie, you know, where there were duelings and they would come up and they would take their gloves up and they would slap to challenge one another to the sword fight in the movie. Well, it, it, a slap on the face is an insult. Could it possibly see that Jesus is saying something that is not so much worldwide as it is personal? He's saying to us, if someone insults you, if someone puts you down, you don't have to insult them back. That, that's kind of what we do, isn't it? In our culture, we, we play this game of one-upmanship. Somebody puts us down, so we try to put them down a little bit farther. And then they try to put us down a little farther, and we try to put them, and, 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 and the anger begins to escalate. Now, some of you may not have experienced this in your marriages, but on occasion, there are a number of marriages where arguments actually do occur. I, I, you just all need to know that. That does happen. I've experienced it on a very rare occasion. Always been my fault. Um, <laughs> you know how it works, don't you? Thank you. 
Um, you say something, somebody gets hurt, and so they say something hurtful back, and off it goes. It happens in families where there are teenagers. Those of you who have experienced that raising teenagers, have you noticed how that works? It starts so simple, and then you don't know what happened. All of a sudden, you're dealing with Armageddon. It happens... It happens when your parents are older. And parents who are older still want to have control, and yet you've got to live your own lives. And all of a sudden, the persons that you love and love you more than anything else in the world, you are raising your voices and saying things to that are hurtful. Jesus says, when somebody slaps you on one cheek, when somebody insults you, you do not have to respond with another insult. You can turn the other cheek. Why is that so hard? Why is it so hard to just simply let an insult pass? Just let it go. Why, why is that so difficult? Well, uh, We, 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 we have to confess that if we, we have a hairline temper or, 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 or we get angry very quickly, that anger probably doesn't have to do anything with the instant, the, the, the situation we're in. Probably what's going on, we're carrying that anger around with us. And, and we've got a short fuse so that it just blows up all of a sudden. In fact, the, the scripture actually talks about that um, what is within us is what comes out of our mouth. <laughs> wow, it's... It, it's uh, how do we stop it then? How do we actually learn to do what Jesus says and, and not return insult for insult? How do we learn to turn the other cheek? Well, to do that requires... It requires a secret superpower. You, you need to you know that. We have a lot of movies in our culture right now with superheroes. We have Superman. We have Thor. We have Iron Man. We have all the Avengers. We have Iron Man 2 and 3. We have Batman, however many there are. We have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. We, we, could, we could make a long list. And in all of these situations, we have someone who, who seems to be almost plain and simple. All of a sudden, they are endowed with a superpower, and they are able to do these amazing things that they were not able to do before. And if we are to begin to live our lives free from insult, free from the anger, free from returning insult to insult, then we need, <laughs> we need that superpower to do it with. We need to be like Iron Man to put on a suit of armor. We need to be able to put on love. That, that's, that's the superpower. That's the thing that can set us free from the anger and the arguments and, 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 and all that goes on. It, it's simple as love. The scripture says, uh, love is patient and kind. Uh, love does not keep a record of wrongs. It is not easily angered. The scripture says that love covers a multitude of sins. Lo it seems that if we can somehow replace this anger and frustration that was within our hearts with, with love, then we can begin to break the cycle of arguments. Could it be that Actually, by, by, by doing that, our lives could be different. How, how do we get this love? How, the only place that I know we can find love enough to change our lives and change the world is through Jesus our Lord. As we, as we allow ourselves to become closer in relationship with Jesus, as we give Him more control of our lives, as we receive more of His love, then we learn to actually be able to, in love, turn the other cheek when needed. Well, there is a story that was on NPR a few years ago of a man named Julio Diaz. And every night at 31, he was a social worker, 
and he would uh, commute in the Bronx, and he would commute uh, a fair distance so that he could go to his favorite diner. And one night as he's going along the subway, he comes to one of the stations, and this night it seems to be particularly empty, and as he walks across, a young man approaches him, and when he gets close, he pulls a knife out and says, give me your money. Julio takes his wallet out and says, here you go. And Mike turns and starts to walk away. And Hilly says, uh, wait a minute, you forgot something. And, and the kid stops and turns back and kind of stares at him. Hilly said, you forgot to take my coat. The kid says, what? Say, hey, dude, listen, if you're out here and you're robbing people at night, you must need money so bad that you're willing to risk going to jail for a long time. I think you're going to be doing the rest of the night and there's coat out here, so you probably ought to take my coat as well. And the kid gave him one of those, you got, you got to be nuts, man. And Hulu said, uh, you know, listen, all I was going to do, all I was trying to do is I was trying to go to dinner. Frankly, if you want to go to dinner with me, you're more than welcome. And the kid did. The kid went to dinner with him. They went to the diner that Julio was used to, and they sat down at the booth, and as they ordered the meal, the, the, the cook came by, and Julio greeted him. The dishwasher waved from the back. Uh, everybody seemed to be knowing Julio, and the, the kids said, why are people being so nice to you? He said, son, weren't you taught when you were being raised that if you were nice to people, they'd be nice to you back? And he said, yeah, but I didn't think anybody did that. So the check came, and Hulu said, uh, Son, you, I buy your supper, but I don't have any money. If, if, if you give my wallet back, I'll pay for dinner for us. <laughs> the kid gave him his wallet back. So as Hulu was paying dinner, he decided that he'd help the kid out. He said, uh, You know, I'll give you 20 bucks if you give me something back. The kid said, What do you want? He said, I'll give you 20 bucks for your knife. The kid sold it to him for 20 bucks. If someone slapped you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If we can somehow allow our souls to be filled with God's love, then we're able to take hurt and insult, and instead of returning it blow for blow, we're able to break the cycle of violence and bring about change. And while that change may seem so small and so subtle on the world scale, don't you realize that it is a change that is epidemic? It spreads on its own. And who knows, maybe just being nice to one another might be, maybe, just a little bit of what will break the cycle of terrorism in our world. Let's pray. Father, there are things that you tell us that are easy to do. And there are things that you tell us that are difficult to do. Turning our cheeks to when we've been slapped is hard. To take an insult, to take a hurt, and not respond with anger, not to strike back, is against some of our natures. But you are a God who can change your nature. So we ask that you would fill us with love, that you would break the cycle of violence at its very earliest stages. Hear our prayers. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. On the other end of the building in the sanctuary. All right. Yes, that was a lot of announcements. And yes, I was kind of delaying, delaying the inevitable. Uh, I'm glad nobody got overzealous and started chucking things at me early. I appreciate that. I am going to go over there. And uh, looks like some Orange Express kids are coming in too. Uh, guys, if you want to go on this side, I'm going to stand over there in a second, okay? And they will be happy to gather up any uh, miss shots. And they'll be closer, so they'll probably hit me pretty good. So anyway, um, today this is not just Pelt the Pastor. It actually is for a good reason we're doing this. Uh, we call it Snowballs for Hope because every time we offer love and care to someone in need, uh, it shows them Christ's love. And so these socks and these gloves that are rolled up like little indoor snowball for an indoor snowball fight here, I'm going to take one for the team. 
because we want to help people in need. So we're going to be helping people through the Good Samaritan Network, which is involved with a lot of <clears throat> human uh, and uh, social service agencies here in, in Noblesville and Mer Hamilton County. Also with our Ugly Quilts. Man, there's a bunch of them. Uh, I'm really going to get hammered. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ugly Quilts, which provides uh, care for homeless people in Indianapolis, and then also our Dinners on Us program. Those will be the recipients of these socks and gloves. Uh, so if you're over here, if you need to move to get a better shot, uh, just remember we got candles up here. So uh, Dick's ready to, to jump and roll on the fire if need be. Uh, but um, <laughs> he's moved up to two and a half. So see, now that's one of the things that rolls downhill. Anyway, I'm going to go over there, and then I invite you to uh, feel free to uh, let it rip. I'm going to give my camera to somebody over here, and they can take a picture of this mess. <laughs> hey, take a picture of this, will you? <laughs> For insurance purposes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try not to fall off the stage, and... Uh, if you try to miss my face, I'd appreciate it. But anyway, all right. One, two, three, go! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're still coming. <laughs> Hey, good job. <laughs> hey, good job. Hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, all right. Good job, guys. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Oh, throw those on up here, too. Thank you. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> All right. Whoa. <laughs> That's a big one. Thank you, guys. Good one. <laughs> All right. Well, now, if you are able, if you'll please stand and rise and join us in our call to worship. I think next year we need to um, raise produce. <laughs> <laughs> Snowballs of canned goods, perhaps? Yeah. No, uh, I appreciate only two in the head and one a little lower. Uh, but... Uh, I didn't feel any rolls of quarters or rocks, so thank you for listening to the announcement the last couple weeks. Appreciate that. Anyway, let us join together in our call to worship. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. Because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone. 